Okay, so windy and stormy out, so hopefully the juice will hold on and uh, the power won't go off, but we got 80 mile an hour winds here on the west coast again for the mil millionth storm of the season. So anyhow, today we have, um, this is a solo list, which means nothing to me or anybody else, but it's a very, very nice instrument. It's a near exact copy of uh, Yenigasawa 901 or WT01 or whatever they call it now. I'm still old school with the old, uh, with the old numbering system. So basically every feature that the 991 has, um, one of the few companies to use uh, double arms on the lower keys, which is really cool. Um, the nicest thing, I'm not sure if you can see it, but yeah, here. So there's an extra arm here. So when you hit the G sharp, it pops up like crazy and it'll actually lift up the F sharp key. So there's an adjustment on the back for this key to hold this key down but a lot of times there's too much torque and I just can't do it. So they've actually what I call a second parachute adjustment. So you can adjust it from the back and adjust it from the front and that'll keep it down. I have a lot of trouble with student model horns where I'll get it absolutely perfect, play a low C, hit the G sharp, and it goes wow, 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 because that springs can't hold that key down good enough because the G sharp has to be nice and stiff to be able to not stick, which is the other notorious part of the saxophone world. So anyhow, double, double arms on the low B on all the longer arms. Low B here, low C, low C here, which is really cool. Um, and you can see not a scratch on it. And it looks like it's absolutely brand new condition. Look at the color of the pads. The pads are in just beautiful shape. Every horn I just got in an actual 991, which is, happens to be $3,000 more expensive, and it looks like somebody rolled out the belt because they always get hit here. This is absolutely perfect. And you can look down inside. It looks like it's hardly been played, if any at all. Um, got all the nice mechanism here where they uh, get around those keys really nice. Um, front fork F, you can just roll right to it instead of a button being half a mile long. Uh, the most distinctive part from the Anagasawas are the underslung octave key. Everybody grabs onto the octave key and bends it. It's just this tiny little skinny little lever to go up to that octave uh, pad. So they do a double arm and put it underneath. So kind of looks kind of cool. Uh, if you see the old Charlie Parker uh, 6M photos, um, they did sort of like the same thing, but they actually put the, the pad underneath, but then the water gets in it. So they kept the pad on top, but put the key underneath, so it's nice and protected. So, um, oversized thumb button in metal instead of plastic. Um, thumb hook is metal instead of plastic. I went to replace a um, Yanagasawa with their stock metal um, thumb hook. $35. I said, heck with you guys, and I put a uh, one of those Music Medic Comfort ones on for a couple of bucks more. So anyhow, uh, again, um, this side always gets scratched up from the shirts and the buckles, and that's ah, just a smudge there. Let's clean that off. There we go. And you're just going up and down like this, constantly playing. you got the chair over here, and especially like the folding and the stacking chairs or the big metal chairs, scratching up the horn like crazy. So um, this was uh, distributed by uh, uh, one of the biggest dealers of Selmer, Yanagasawa saxophones, uh, Dave Kessler in, in Las Vegas, and I talked to him about it. And they basically um, um, contract companies overseas, probably Taiwan, and have these uh, saxophones made for them to their specifications. So this one is brass body, like again the 991, but the customer ordered it with the bronze it's either bronze or gold brass, um, two different rose brass, they call it. Um, but very cool contrast with the bronze neck and uh, probably a little bit different sound, maybe a little richer sound with it. You know, who knows? But a very nice fit. Um, you notice it's like twice as thick around the neck joint here than most student models are. So this is a good high intermediate model saxophone and would probably last maybe somebody forever, at least all the way through college. And then you have to drop the big bucks. We're talking, you know, three, four thousand bucks for maybe a vintage Mark VI. Uh, not even a Mark VI. You can't touch those for under six thousand. But maybe a, a newer Selmer or something like that. 
but there really would be no reason to because this is a, a really nice little horn. Um, the other thing with these imports, I've been getting them in with terrible, terrible cases. They come with these really cheesy zipper cases. Second time around, the zipper breaks. Uh, or they come in with these plastic cases, and they're like eggshells. And the minute you put a little ding in the corner, this thing starts cracking, and, and you just throw the case away. So this one comes in a nice... Very sturdy wood case, and again, in brand new condition. It looks just like not even a scuff on it. So, um, you've got the handle on the end, just like the pro guys. So, very nice case. Um, so, anyhow, the good news. Oh, let me get that right back straight. Look at that fit. The, the screw is completely loose. And it's that tight of a fit. So you don't even have to worry about the screw. And you don't have to worry about what I call the gear shift model. Where you know it's leaking because the neck's flopping up and down. So my test is... So down to that low B flat at a whisper. So everything has to be perfectly tight to get that good of a, a nice, firm, low B-flat. So you've got a big flip on the low B-flat here, so you just flop right to it. Really easy to hit. And a lot of times, I don't even slide to it. I just break my knuckle again to that big flip and makes it really fast to get from... From the low B uh, to the low B flat on uh, the front up. And I, I, we just did a, a saxophone clinics for our local jazz festival. Luckily, we got a little break in the weather. And half the kids there have been playing saxophone since the fourth grade up to high school. Don't know what the front F key is, and they don't know what the side, uh, side C is. So instead of playing... And the same with the F, F to F sharp. <laughs> so there's all these little keys on the saxophone that players rarely ever use. So anyhow, got to educate them. They don't show you that in the Bellwin Band Builder Book One or whatever they're using. <laughs> So, place as good as my pro Yanagasawa. The main difference is the material is a little different. The brass is uh, not quite up to the Yanagasawa, but again, we're talking thousands, maybe three thousand dollars cheaper. firm on the keys. It's not even broken in. I can feel the, the action. It's just a hair on the stiff side for me personally, but it's got a nice firm feel and it'll break in just like an old pair of shoes. tune and call it quits. Um, I keep on trying to keep them short, but it's just so much fun to play. And it's one of the few times I actually get to play around a little bit. So, um, see if we can bring this up. <clears throat> Perfect for this time here. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
saxophone in brand new condition with a nice case in also new condition. Plays great, looks great, at a great price. This is priced up basically a new student model and I'd put this, you know, well above that because it's got all the pro features on it. Sounds, plays great. And there it is. Um, again, bronze neck and um, pads look like new and I, I don't even see, I can't even find, not even a bottom on the bow here, not even a scratch on it. They're always smashed and banged down there. Just a couple foot fingerprint smudges. So there it is. Okay, try to keep it short. So www Steve Gray Saxes, that's S T V E G R A Y, Saxes plural, dot com. So check it out. Lots of pictures. <laughs>